We're joined now by uh, Michael Eric Dyson, the Georgetown University professor, the author of Know What I Mean, who uh, met Michael Jackson at the funeral for Johnny Cochran uh, and uh, has been good enough to uh, join us. Uh, thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you, Keith. Give me your reaction. This is, uh, this is clearly, I mean, we could be discussing just his music career and say he's one of, the, one of the giants walking the earth. We could discuss just his role in pop culture and say the same thing. His, his role in, in, uh, in great trials and say just the same thing. This is, a, this is a, a towering figure of our times. Well, there's no question about that. I've uh, listened to the discussion in regard to Michael Jackson and comparing him, say, to the Beatles, an extraordinary group. Elvis Presley, an amazing icon. But he really did carve in the stratosphere of American popular culture and American music a, a unique niche, so to speak, because he was capable of joining so much of the ver vernacular traditions of African American music uh, with the most uh, up-to-date technology to project into the world the forceful ambition and the edifying inspiration of African-American culture and music. Think about it. Uh, at the age of six and seven, he already understands the genius of a Jackie Robbins, uh, of a Jackie Wilson. Mm -hmm. He articulates those dance movements into his own. He understands the genius of a James Brown. But listen to this, Keith. If you ask Michael Jackson in the late 60s, before he was even 10 years old, who his favorite group was, it was the Delphonics out of Philadelphia, especially the lead singer, William Hart. That's an, a piece of Arcania, so to speak, a piece of musical esoterica that is not usually uh, known by people beyond the beltway of black music. And yet this 10-year-old prodigy uh, is already comprehending the genius of a William Hart and uses some of those, uh, if you will, melodic and harmonic intensities and projects them to the world. So yeah, he did that. And he was also capable of bridging the gulf between black and white and Latino. He brought together di different dimensions of religion. He brought human beings together across the axis of race and class and gender, and he was extraordinary. Remember, he was the first black artist to be played on MTV. Mm. So he broke the racial barrier uh, in an interesting fashion by the sheer force of his music and the velocity and the intensity of his genius coming at us uh, from every dimension. He brought Fred Astaire and street movement together in his own dance steps, and he also projected uh, the, the larger-than-life persona of Sammy Davis Jr., widely recognized as the greatest entertainer of his generation, and took it to the next level. So, Professor Dyson, what was it about Michael Jackson, the person inside there that led to the scenario in which uh, dying at, at such a young age uh, draws that crowd that we're looking at at UCLA at the medical center when that would not have been the case with no offense to William Hart but that was not those are two totally different uh, oh, uh, career, career and life paths and other than circumstance and fate and all the rest of that what was it in Michael Jackson that drove him what was it that brought him to to this kind of life that concluded today well, obviously, uh, it's the kind of openness and vulnerability that Michael Jackson had, the very shimmering voice, the transition from a child prodigy uh, into an adult superstar. And that, that doesn't usually happen. You'd have to go back into musical history and find somebody like Mozart, who at four or five is composing extraordinary work um, to find an analog to a Michael Jackson who so early understood what his life would be about and then hewed to that path and stood on it for nearly, what, 50 years. I mean, certainly 45 good years of his life are spent in devotion to his music. So I think people felt the, the will to creativity. We just saw Kobe Bryant bring his enormous will to bear in the NBA Finals. Think about a person with that kind of will and drive, of a Michael Jordan, of a fierce determination to be the best. It wasn't simply the fact that he had an innate genius that God gave to him. It was also the ability to hone that genius. A genius who works hard at his or her craft uh, is what Michael Jackson was, and he showed us what the evidence of that could be, but also the vulnerability. After all, Keith, he endured enormous tragedy, mm -hmm. both at home uh, with, with his own family life. He endured it as he uh, got older and his voice began to change and his skin began to change and he went through enormous uh, transitions in terms of his own physical self. But through it all, I think the, uh, the grace note, if you will, was the fact that here was a man who was hugely vulnerable to the influence around him, childlike in both the edifying and the destructive sense.
senses of that word, but also who ultimately connected to an audience so much so that he spoke to their hearts directly. I saw him in concert, for instance, when I was a graduate student at Princeton uh, in, in the 80s, and he was an extraordinary figure who was able to uh, touch the hearts of the people who were listening and also make them feel that, that he was intimately involved with them, even as he had this great, huge spectacle on stage. And I think it's that vulnerability that drew people to him, uh, not the freakishness of what became his life mm -hmm. in the latter part of uh, these, you know, three or four or five last 10 years nearly, but it was the genius of the music and the resonance of their human vulnerability that I think ultimately uh, allowed him to touch their hearts and for that music to continue to be part of the landscape. And let's not forget the music after all, as you said earlier, after 10 and 20 years when people have long since forgotten some of the, um, if you will, the, the undigestible elements that don't often go with our superstars, how can we, how can we on the one hand acknowledge their genius but also acknowledge their frailties and foibles? Mm -hmm. When uh, That's long since dismissed. What will stand as a monument to his incredible genius will be the sheer diversity and the power of the music he made. His voice at the age of 10 was as soulful a conjuring of the ambitions of black people in America and indeed human beings who suffered around the world as any might imagine. And then as an adult, he was able to have a willed vulnerability that resonated with millions of people around the globe. The Georgetown University professor, Michael Eric Dyson, author of You Know, uh, know What I Mean, who's been good enough to spend a few moments with us trying to put the life of Michael Jackson in perspective. Professor, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.